Dear all, thank you so much for inviting me to this event. I'm so sorry I cannot be there in person, but I hope that this makes up for it at least a little bit. As we all know, the HIV and AIDS activism has, since its conception, been very much a human rights job. The pioneers of the fight against HIV and AIDS were fighting for people's lives for proper health care, for LGBTQ rights, reproductive rights and human rights for all those stigmatized groups of people and minorities, such as drug users as well. We cannot beat this epidemic without understanding the wider context. Women and minority rights are under increasing pressure in Europe and elsewhere around the world. There is a growing number of attempts and campaigns to reverse the progress that has been made in the national and European level and international level. We have seen major victories in reproductive rights, social rights, human rights, and those are thanks to all of you great activists, NGOs, politicians and experts who have pushed for them. But now we are also witnessing another kind of a situation. We are having pushback on many of these issues in many of the European Union member states. For example, Poland introduced almost a total ban of abortions and restriction to sexual education. And in Hungary, for example, this summer the parliament passed a law banning the marketing of homosexuality for young people and minors. And basically what this means is that the sexual and gender minorities can no longer be represented in schools, education material, television and advertising. This is very cruel law and basically what the decision makers are doing here is making the life so much more difficult, especially for young people and the rainbow minorities. And this law lends, tends to lead to a lack of education and it's also sending a very harmful message that it's not acceptable to be yourself, to be who you are. Even when they are not running the government, the conservative forces have a wide range of means to pursue their own goals. For example, targeted legal action, communication campaigns with big money, fake news and other disinformation. And I saw this lobbying in the European Parliament, for example, when we discussed reproductive rights last summer, and the members of parliament, including me, received thousands of coordinated messages, letters and even creepy little fetus dolls that really, really were upsetting to my office and me. And this also increased the mainstreaming of these anti-gender attitudes, which can in many ways affect the work also against HIV and AIDS. This leads to an increased stigma around sexuality and also sexually transmitted diseases. And this can treat to people not getting treatment or not going to tests and treatment. This anti-gender ideology can also have an effect for the civil society organizations that are working with HIV on AIDS. I have especially seen this in countries such as Hungary and Poland. Many of the NGOs who are working on these issues have a lot of issues with being stigmatized, against, uh, being, being against like, uh, traditional or family values. And this is very detrimental because the NGOs have been very, very key players in tackling these epidemics. But I also want to end with a positive note. In most of the EU countries, both reproductive rights, women's rights and minority rights have been moving forward since the past decade. And even now in the European Parliament, we have a strong majority for these rights. Last summer, we even faced this very strong anti-gender lobbying, but still we passed a historic report on reproductive rights. We took a clear, clear stance on sexual health and health rights and that they are a fundamental pillar of human rights and women's rights all over Europe. And the parliament has also been clear about supporting the rainbow community on many occasions. For example, deciding that the EU is a zone for, of freedom for these people that are part of sexual minorities. The parliament also has acknowledged the connection between human rights, sexual and reproductive rights and the fight against HIV and AIDS. And I hope that this understanding goes now to influence the work that the member states do in tackling these issues. I hope that what it will lead to is a lot more discussion in a positive note, more money, more possibilities for the NGOs, 
and better legislation. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you will have a great webinar event. I hope that we can see each other also face to face at some point. Thank you.